Good morning. Well, we've got a magpie outside the window, and that's one for sorrow. But it doesn't bring sorrow, it helps you through your sorrow. So it still doesn't bird well, does it? Um, October the 27th. Tomorrow might be um, a bit strange because my mum's 93 tomorrow. So I'll be visiting her. Today, Mercury Queen Cox cry on, a good day for a rest, a healthy activity, sports and to relax. Rune in Virgo. So that's you lot girls, make sure you rest. Um so Moon in Virgo then. Let's have a look. What they got for us. Let's have that one. Oh, it's Odin again. The old father. Father Sky. So. Trying to gain knowledge. Jupiter. Abundance. Gemini. Communication. And 11th house of Aquarius, wishes and dreams coming true, if you face the chaos. So whatever comes your way, face it head on. The communication may be imminent. I'm plugged in because I haven't got much charge on my phone so I'm hoping that it doesn't pack up on me I had another power cut last night And now the magpie has gone silent. It must have flown away. So today's card is the grandparents. For me it's always Walter. It's hospitals, it's care workers, it's nurses, hospital staff. It's the abdomen, the intestines. It's going within, following your gut instinct. So let's hope it's the right way up. But it does mean that you'll have to walk away from everything you've ever known or believed to be true to follow your own path. Just 
song is My Life. I can't remember who it is that sings it. I don't care what you say anymore, this is my life. So that would fit with, oh, but he's not walking away. He's putting in extra hours and trying to gain materially. And that will not spurred well. Yeah, there she is again, high priestess. That's not good. Health issues then. Letting negativity into your field. So health issues could be financial, emotional or physical health issues. Not necessarily just um, medical. Something is not um, quite right here. We've come off path. So, problems with a vehicle, and that vehicle could be your body. So, it's mechanical problems, uh, speeding tickets, parking fines, um, car accidents, emergency vehicles. What is the house of the home and family life? 7 or 25, negative energy. Cancer. Someone does not have the moral high ground, so they've no room to talk. So the silence and secrets are being kept because they know they're in the wrong. Someone is being put at the gates of hell by another. Daughters, um, letting negativity into your aura, like I said. Um, don't take um, injections or anything into your body by the mouth. That's toxic. Um Especially the written and spoken word. This is someone that has to be quiet because of others. So it's a nightmare situation that keeps um, keeps you trapped for at least nine weeks. Someone may be um, gagged. Two dogs, two snakes, Virgo energy, today's card, going off path. Perhaps there's had some gossip, uh, problems with a fire sign child. This is the dark night of the soul. We've got another eclipse. Whether we've got one this year or not, I don't know. Elaine will know, she'll tell me. I'm sure I've asked her this before recently. Um... But the thing is, now we see the path, even though it's hard one. At least it's a, it's clear we can see where we're going. Um, but it's going to be hard. Spreading yourself too thin uh, no longer is a, a possibility. So we see that this path is going to be very hard. We're trying to create something. And there is the 11th house of Aquarius. Ankles and legs. Uh, breasts and stomach. Stomach today. Uh, we have to revisit something from the past. The rose is there. Um, so a rose planted for a loved one. Or um, put in a coffin. There's the burning bush. Uh, I think that's how God spoke to, uh, I don't know if it's Moses or Abraham. But anyway, there's the phoenix rising from the ashes. So that's not happening yet because we have to, we're suffering in some way. The ghosts of the past are haunting us. Uh, we're dimming our light to fit in. So somebody is unable to speak because, uh, possibly because of their own uh, participation in something that they know was wrong. So 
interesting story this one so having to stay in a place a job or a situation maybe because you're not uh, lily white yourself that's not a good scenario so Aquarius and Cancer. Um, let's have a look. I'm a family life and uh, crowds, connections, your social life. Yeah, somebody acted in haste and will repent at leisure. Sagittarius energy. So hard lessons to learn. Failed studies. Oh, so this is what's, what they're talking about. So that's Odin, who he is hanging about. It's also Prometheus. The liver, the feet and the toes. It's Pisces energy. It's having to say no. It's not people pleasing or hanging about in limbo anymore like to say no and if you're going to do anything do it out of the goodness of your heart or not at all if you don't want to do it don't do it 12 because judgment day has arrived so we have to settle this long-standing problem and make a fresh start so the phoenix can rise so that's the phoenix so there's born in the year of the rooster could be important Pisces is positive, number 12, um, and 20. So bind your soul to the spiritual, not the physical. It's also Virgo energy and geriatric issues, knees, teeth, and bones. Somebody is ascending. Somebody will be found out for their past deeds. Uh, for taking credit for what others have done, stealing, lying, etc. Uh, we're not seeing the whole picture. There's been an injustice here, 8 or 26, Libra energy. Somebody's been sitting on the fence for far too long and they're in a codependent situation, which is probably why they're stuck. They can't or they won't. Uh, stand on their own two feet and this is causing problems within the home and family life a home is not a home without a fire in the hearth food on the table and a welcome at the door so an unhappy home life the loss of a home a celebration called off there are people in uniform uh, older generation Possibly someone of a darker complexion. Any or all of those. There is um, Capricorn energy. Is a good friend and a generous one. Um, financial success. Stability. Rewards. Somebody wants to escape. They're already halfway out. They don't want to repeat the mistakes of the past. Because it's a crossroads. And... The definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting a different outcome. So, you have to do things differently. You have to turn your world upside down to end this situation. People don't like being wrong, do they? And admitting that they're wrong. So, yeah. Dwelling on the past, crying over spilt milk. If you're living in the past, you're depressed. If you're living in the future, you're anxious. Uh, there's a lot of water under the bridge, so build that bridge and get over it. Uh, stop crying over spilt milk of the past. Uh, the past is over. The future's not promised. Live in the now. There it is again. Well done, spirit. So twice we are told that 
they don't have the moral high ground, it's time to say no. Put your boundaries in place. Don't be the sacrifice. Someone may be coming out of prison, uh, be that a mental or a physical, because an injustice took place. It wasn't meant to be there in the first place. The wrong team, red lights, so that beware of accidents, like I said, speeding tickets, etc. The red lights, uh, red flags. This is not your team. There's no strong foundations. It's time to leave that situation behind because you're slugging your guts out like Cinderella for no uh, good reason. They just stood around watching you do all the graft. So it's time to stop and say no, no, not today Satan, and a change is coming, number 10, um, a run of good luck, they keep saying this, number 10 don't they, chance or fate, but you must refrain from boredom and apathy, you have to get off your backside and fight for it, do something about it, it's not just going to come and knock on your door, yeah, there's, and then there will be a new home or a celebration takes place when it was called off or lost. Uh, so maybe you're between two properties. Maybe you're in limbo waiting to move or about to get married and believe in your uh, parental home. But there is some sort of celebration there. The foundations will be stronger. There is illness and bad temper, 8 or 26. Uh, somebody's heart isn't in it. Uh, there's fear. A fear of this. But it will be a transformational time. Scorpio, 13. Absolutely brilliant. So... Cowardice, we've got to avoid boredom, apathy. Uh, we've got to face our fears if we want to achieve our dreams. So something dies, so something new can be born. Uh, an ending and a new beginning. Odin. Othila. All the rooms that we've got, and they keep giving us the same ones, don't they? Oh. And it is the letter O. Apple is dear to all men if they may enjoy their at home whatever is right and proper in continual prosperity. So doing the right thing, and somebody hasn't. The name Ethel could be important. Um, the oldest literal meaning of this rune is the nobility or prince. Othila is related to the first syllable of the Saxon word athlin, athlete, meaning heir to the throne, so William. The modern German word Adele, Adel, so Adele, the name, and the Dutch Edel are both derived from Othila. And both of these words have connotations of aristocracy. So we can't rule out Harry as well. The room therefore points to the rightful claim to inherited status, lands and possessions. Also indicates noblesse oblige, the obligation of one's position in society and the duties that one owes to one's kin and people. Of course, there is also the added implication of loyalty and that the people owe to their monarch. Othila is symbolised by the Hawthorne tree. We talked about that. It is in the post in the community tab. Um, and the humble clover. So good luck. But it was most symbolic with Odin, the king of the gods of Asgard. The room provides the initial letter of Odin's name and is considered especially sacred to him. Although Othila denotes nobility 
and even kingship and you cannot have a chariot without being noble so because the peasants couldn't afford chariots Although Othila denotes nobility and even kingship, it is also a ruin of sacrifice, which is why we've got that there. After all, what modern monarch or head of state could possibly lead a normal life? The very position implies a sacrifice of personal freedom. And in many cases throughout history, it has been necessary for such leaders eventually to sacrifice their lives as well. So, the passing of a leader. So secrets being kept. So it was with Odin, who hung himself upon a windy tree to win the knowledge of the runes for the good of all, gods and humankind alike. Unlike recent times, a king was thought of as representing the luck of his subject. If he thrived, and so did the land. If he ailed, it was believed that his land and people would suffer. And we've been seeing that in the UK, haven't we? At least modern monarchs do not have to worry about being sacrificed if their power wanes, as was the case in ancient Europe. Othila represents a time when hallowed traditions will become increasingly important. The rune suggests something that stands the test of time, a set of values that is fixed, immovable and strangely comforting. In addition, the true meaning of loyalty is the most common interpretation. This loyalty can be expressed in any number of ways. Patriotism, devotion to particular religion or identification with a group whose aims you share. However, group loyalty is most common in those who share the heritage, namely a family. The ruin may signify a rightful inheritance, but this not, need not mean a bequest of property or money. It could be title, could be psychic ability, whatever it is. Um, although they may not be like unlikely, it could denote the traits that have come down through the generations that express a certain correctness of behaviour and a sense of belonging. So that's why she's keeping quiet because um, you're not allowed to speak. Justice and honour are associated with this rune. Well, there's no justice and honour in this situation because we know there's been an injustice. And fate needs to right that wrong. Uh, because of the dynastic implications of Ophelia, engagements and marriages, which we've got, one may be called off, one may take place, uh, candidates, issues involving children or eventual heirs. So the problem is the children and will turn out favourably. If someone passes, there may be objections in a will. You may find yourself dealing with wills and property and may need advice from older, wiser heads to chart a course through the paperwork. An advantageous move of home, we see that, could be indicated too, especially if it somehow brings you closer to your origins. But there will be disloyalty and the overturning of established principles when this ruin is found inverted. Disputes over inheritance and quarrels about money and status are likely when Othila is inverted. A loss of some kind is shown, possibly due to theft or legal chicanery, but that will be found out. Uh, modern interpreters often suggest the inverted Othila predicts accidents and problems with machinery. So car accidents are very possible, so be careful. Although your loved one may have passed in an accident and now there's been some... Disputes over the will. Jupiter, or oh, house was it? 11th, wasn't it? So, 11th house is about crowds, finding your tribe, um, the legs and ankles, social and tribal gatherings, the workplace, the colour deep yellow, Group activities, society, friends, your hopes, wishes, aspirations and your social consciousness. The 11th house is where your personal sense of identity is extended to the greater group. So these are not your team, you need to find your team. Uh, the extended family, a professional class, a tribe or race. This is the house of group interactions and organised society 
a social consciousness is developed. The rules governing human conduct are examined and if necessary a change is effected. As such, the planets in the 11th house describe how well or otherwise a person fits into society. Isolated, introspected signs and planets find it difficult to move beyond the confines of their own self in order to mix in the wider group, whilst outgoing signs and planets quickly embrace the extension of self. Traditionally, the 11th house is a domain of hopes and wishes. It is what is envisioned and aspired to for the good of society and for those with social awareness. The dream is for the good of the community and for those who have not yet developed a sense of social integration, all dreams will centre around themselves. So selfishness. Jupiter, Gemini. Expansion through new concepts, exceedingly talkative, communication. She's not very talkative, is she? Jupiter in Gemini tells tall tales and lies. She's not lying, she's just not saying anything. Exaggerates their abilities and distributes fresh belief. So don't lie about your abilities because it will cost you in the long run. So when you're writing your CVs, etc., make sure that it's truthful. Mercury, there it is. Gemini, Mercury, th number three. And it is the one and 28 again, the magician. So the mind, the positivity, the miracles... As above, so below, as within, so without. If you want to tell people the truth, you must make them laugh or they will kill you. So she doesn't want to speak because she knows it's going to be trouble if she does. Uh, her name, Oscar, Kim and Wild. This is about intelligence, mind games, quick wit, uh, medicine. It's those who works with Blades, cups, discs and wood. When it, could, when it comes to the body, Mercury rules the eyes, the brain and the nervous system, as well as fingers and toes. We've talked about toes again. So if you break your toe, you know why. Um, Hermes with the god of roads and transportation. So that's the problems there. Delays in travel, um, issues with vehicles. Um, also, a parcel carrier Hermes could be important. Uh, mediation and interpreters magic and medicine uh, and Apollo it's for me, my generation it's Apollo 11 so Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldridge or any or all part of those names could be important and the sun god this makes sense Mercury being the closest planet to the sun Mercury is also a comedian, but can be a bit of a trickster. And just when the energy seems to be flowing one way, they change the mind and go another way. Uh, it's spontaneous and insanely flexible. Mercury is the wisdom and the stupidity found in supposedly intelligent people. When it's not connected to the heart or feelings, Mercury maximises the imagination, but can also symbolise a liar. So we have got the liar there. Uh, and when it comes to double talk with mixed meaning, it is the planet of gaslighting, because purposeful confusion of the minds of others to gain something not really deserved. Now, this is a prime example of spirit only having so many cards they can use to get a message across. Now, this may mean, for some, gaslighting, but for others, I've talked about the power cup last night, and today's card, I did say, was Grandfather Walter. He was a gaslighter, and this is the lamplighter. 
holds this lamp up to light your way. So something may happen where your power's off and you have to use um, an old gas light. Or this may be what you inherited and you don't think it's worth anything, and it is. But it causes purposeful confusion. So somebody's deliberately trying to confuse you. Uh, to gain something they don't really deserve. Mercury shows how mentally sharp and flexible we are, our mental range. So like I said, for some of us, we will just take the cards at face value. For others of us, we will take the message that Spirit are trying to give us and work with it and figure out what they really mean. Uh, However, Mercury shows how mentally sharp and flexible we are, our mental range and how eloquent we are. Mercury tends to be chatty, superficial and into playing games, especially psychological games, even psychological warfare and other types of puzzles. This is about friends, friendly relationships and Freudian slips, where you say something that doesn't come out as it was intended but actually reveals your real thoughts. Through gossip, maybe. It is time to use all of your mental faculties to get your point across. Words and how you use them are very significant. It may mark a period where you either have to talk your way into or out of a sticky situation. However, if you've got nothing nice to say, say nothing at all. Whatever the reason or occurrence, how you communicate through writing or speaking is of utmost importance. Composition, writing or editing may figure in. So even if you've got something that you need to address, a problem, uh, say it nicely. This is not a time to stay static or sit still. Beware of gossip. There we are. Sitting still and gossip. Uh, the important thing to remember is what you say in this situation can and will be used against you, possibly in evidence, in justice, like I said, so choose your words wisely. It also rules technology. If a question is about job or career, you can be certain that mastering some new form of technology is about to come into play. Since Mercury is the planet of speed, you can expect to see fast developments. Regarding the romance of relationship. Friendship is the best option for now. So there he is. Very good and generous friend. Uh, the time has not yet ripened to enter this relationship. You may attract partners who are non-emotional, highly rational and objective. These lovers are first friends and may be offended by flip remarks or jokes over serious matters. You may become involved with someone who double talks and is witty but has no emotional connection. This is also a kind of brothers and sisters as well as twins. Now marks a period which involves observation, reasoning, taking things apart and putting them back together as they were or in your own way. It is time of flighty emotions and matters developing quickly. It also signifies travel. So if you're leaving, make sure you take a map because your sat nav might not work. Make sure you're prepared and leave early. Uh, so you don't have to rush. You may be going on a trip. It will be a more noteworthy vacation than the usual trip you take. The matter in question will be best served by using intellect, weighing the matter up, being reasonable and also being spontaneous in your responses. Codes and forms of magic may also figure in. Mercury brings on keen awareness to use your mind and what you know to the fullest in this matter. So speaking, travel, speed, coordination, adeptness, arguments, glibness and technology. So that argument may be over the internet, keyboard warriors. Number seven, there it is. The gift of communication, which is Gemini, Mercury, what we've just got there. Well done, spirit. And for me, this is a big connection to Kristen because of the crystal. So the crystal came from Kristen. So, 
I received a gift from the elemental messenger one morning, holding out a double terminated quartz crystal. Her message was clear. Crystals help with our communication with the other realms, like two-way radios. In particular, it's an amplifier, and therefore aids with our perception of energy, and also allows messengers from the other realms to make their message stronger. Quartz comes in many shapes and sizes, and is also a constituent of many other crystals. We can use it as a substitute for any crystal we do not have, due to its ability to allow channeled energy to work through it. We are also able to use it to help with our communications to other beings, like the elementals, for example. The gift that making contact with the other realm brings is truly something to be grateful for. Understanding that there are other realms coinciding with our own may be something foreign to us, because in Western society we are led to believe that in order for something to be true, it must be backed up by science or proven to exist. But we know that that's not true, don't we? The other realms require your faith and belief first in order to see or sense them. Enjoy this card. It may be showing us that something positive is coming your way. The outcome will be favourable, so a run of good luck. Number 10. Or oh, it's time to make contact with the other realms and elementals. Ask them to make themselves known to you. Invite them into your world. Ask yourself what you can give in return. This does not need to be anything material. It can simply be an act of kindness for someone else. Pay it forward kind of deed. See the gift in everything, even in a situation that you feel is negative. There is always a lesson for growth. There's your lesson. In every situation. So ask for the gift of wisdom that the elementals can give you. There we go. And I had an owl out back last night. So Halloween 13, there it is. Uh, Samhain. October the 31st. And the trip, the cart again, the wheels. Jupiter abundance, there we are. So, Samhain, the Celtic cross quarter holy day that welcomes the beginning of winter. It is time when the veil is thin between the worlds, the seen and the unseen. The ancestors and spirits of the dead are honoured. Their wisdom and messages are sought. Jack o' lanterns lights the path for those who travel through the veil and protects against any fear, evil or mischievous spirits that might be abroad. The ancestors are offering guidance. Watch for unexpected messages in your dreams, chance encounters with strangers, voice whispered on the wind. You have nothing to fear in the dark. So I would add to that animals, birds, insects, look them up as your um, animal totem. Um, numbers on a clock, look, look them up with angel numbers, Joanne, and see what's what. Mystery, ancestors, deepening. I embody the wisdom of my ancestors. What is it that the spirits of the dead want you to know? Oh, and it's upright, the number 10. Heliborus Niger. There we are. Beautiful. Shh. Well done, spirit. So number 10 again, Heliborus Niger, Helibor. Venus, Saturn and Mars. Love, truth and war. Emotions. Helibor is a potent poison, warning us of its nature by burning the mouth. So you've got to be very careful because you will harm yourself with harsh words. Um... When consumed and burning the skin with its sap when touched. So um, also laryngitis, stuff like that. This quality indicates its power as a powerful and caustic force to set boundaries and offer protection. And that's what they want us to do. Protect yourself, put your boundaries in place and learn to say no. Um, In an incense, it is used to consecrate Saturn's talisman for calling in the powers of Mars. 
In folk magic, hellebore would be used ritually to protect cattle from malign influences of witches. Despite this, hellebore is also a plant associated with witchcraft and the witch goddess Hecate, the guardian of the crossroads, which is the feminine uh, version of our hermit. You are at a crossroads. A place you are put by fate. And Seridan, the shit starer, the pot starer, as I call her. The root is most often used in necromancy and to gain knowledge or inspiration from the unseen forces of the dark. These qualities are lent to by its less obvious feature. It blooms in winter time, often under the snow, giving it the name the Christmas rose, and its growing nature is often the edge or within forests though it can also take full light. Another variety, Heliborus orientalis, blooms closer to Easter and is named the Lenten or Easter rose, despite Helibor being in the buttercup and not the rose family. So there's rose, but we know that this is a buttercup. So the ground up root of Helibor is sprinkled in a circle around oneself for invisibility. So somebody wants to crawl away Disappear. Escape. The deeper mystery of Helibor is in the darkness and the subtle stillness of the silence. There it is. Uh, its healing magic is for those who feel like they are unseen and invisible or unloved and underappreciated. It aids solitary healing process where we have to be alone in our pain, grief and hurt where we must find the love of the divine, of the goddess, on our own. Helibor can help us feel protected during our healing, but also assist us in dealing with the feelings of isolation. So coming out of our comfort zone, transforming our energy and healing. Um, through our pain, we can awaken to a deeper level of mystical awareness. We need a learned time. To be unseen and unheard there. Uh, so if I disappear there's a reason. To reflect upon our own life and our own path. The spirit is gazing off in our own direction. Unconcerned about us. Doing our own work. And the hellebore teaches us how to do the same. We might need to set the boundaries of our learned time more aggressively as others could impede and pressure us to support their needs. When we are alone and unseen, we will bloom. I am silent and still to hear the voice of the goddess. Thanks for listening. Maybe you need to take your phone somewhere quiet so you can listen to this. Who knows? Bye-bye.